Hey everyone, this is uh, Dr. Jeffrey Gladden here on the Gladden Longevity Podcast. And I just want to let you know that today's show was an interview, or is an interview, with a, a gentleman, Justin Franson. Really fascinating conversation about athletic performance and also about EMFs and grounding, protecting ourselves from EMFs, but also a parallel conversation about interesting ways to train uh, the nervous system that can take anybody's athletic performance to a significantly higher level. I think you're going to really enjoy both conversations. Welcome, everybody, to this edition of the Gladden Longevity Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Jeffrey Gladden, and um, we are all about living young for a lifetime and turning you guys into age hackers. So I, I don't have Steve Ryder with me here as my co-host today. He's off doing some traveling, so I'm going to be solo here for a little bit. But I've got a uh, very interesting guest for you today, a guy named Justin Franson, who lives in Southern California. He's a surfer, but he um, he's become an expert in EMFs, and it's a hot topic given all of the uh, EMFs that we're all exposed to all the time. So, Justin, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Yeah. Glad to have you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, I know that you're quite athletic and you enjoy surfing and some other things, but tell us a little bit about how you came to be where you are today. What what happened? Yeah, the short story is I grew up being a tennis player and, and went to USC, got injured, couldn't play. So we we'll always wanted to figure out how to help people kind of get, get to that level that they wanted to be at. Okay. And what kind of injury did you have? Both my wrists gave out. So I think I was lifting too heavy as a young age and the metacarpals, everything shifted. And so I had mm-hmm. two-handed backhand and both my forehand and my backhand. I literally had my arm in a sling for a month or so. I couldn't even move my whole arm. It was so bad. I was playing hours a day uh been nice to have cairo wow. back then but it wasn't in my realm and yeah. so anyhow i i rolled into helping athletes start athleticism.com at a scripts clinic in la jolla california at a shiloh pavilion 25 years ago and mm-hmm. we do nerve work for sports performance we did primal reflex release techniques and we had one of the first BOSU balls in the gym. Tell me about the nerve work. Uh, we were doing tell, PR yeah, stuff, me. like literally yeah. John Imes' work. It's okay. a primal reflex release, release techniques. And, and I would do Dr. Darren Weissman's lifeline technique uh, work for emotional clearance. And so I started just diving into more of that nerve type of work and doing active isolated stretching, Aaron Mattis method. So we had a really unique background of working with the body. And then my mentor was Dean Brinham, a track-based program, speed coach, strength coach that was from the NBA and NFL. So we were one of the few programs that crossed over into working with professional athletes in multiple sports. And Okay. Yeah. And what was the basic tenet? Was it basically to take people who had suffered an injury and try to rehabilitate them? Or was it kind of more like prehab or was it training or was it, what is it all the above or what was going on? It was mostly high level professionals going to the next level. So that's what it started as, but it evolved into prehab training and then literally post PT work. Uh, and then bridge training, I call it that bridge training where you bridge that gap from when they're not done with PT to getting them back. And so now I use a lot of light and sound therapy as well in that. So now it's more treating than training per se. And then we have a tremendous uh, mm-hmm. product centric business where we sell our products uh, directly to doctors and then online at athleticism.com and then obviously we'll talk on emfrocks.com but it's really it's been this evolution of speed and coordination and ambidexterity training into stretching therapy and then nerve work and pain release and and then now treating concussions 
and then doing emotional clearings and sound therapy to get them in that alpha brainwave state. And so throughout that journey of working with the body, what I saw was our athletes coming in with wearable technology on and they were breaking down from that wearable technology. And in particular, interesting. Yeah. We had one guy in particular who was the strongest fittest endurance athlete came through and his entire arm went weak right under his, uh, actually had pain right under his watch. So right below his watch, he had just tremendous pain. And so, and then his arm went weak and I, and he said, Justin, what do I do? Like I, my wrist hurts. And I like, I looked down, I said, well, that's radiation on your wrist. Let's take that off and see how he feels. So the pain went away right away directly below it, but he just didn't correlate it because you know, everyone wears a watch all the time back then. And then his mm -hmm. arm function slowly started restored. And that was about a decade ago. That was the aha moment where I had a bunch of learn experiences throughout my younger days and knew that we had to look to nature and figure this out and understand EMFs and figure out how to coexist with it because it wasn't getting any better. Right. No, it's definitely not going away. I'm kind of curious about your training techniques, some of the techniques that you would do. You know, my, my thought on training is that basically it's all about training the nervous system, quite honestly and the muscles come along for the ride, right? But it's really, it's the nervous system that we're training, whether it's mindset, whether it's stress resilience, whether it's emotional releasing, kind of breaking through the barriers that are constructed stories in our, in our head, or whether it's down to neuromuscular reaction times or coordination or balance or strength or speed or any of that. And you know, I think one of the interesting things is that whenever you're doing something well, it becomes effortless, right? So like an effort, an effortless tennis shot, right? It's, it's like the perfect shot or a golf swing or whatever it is. When you're doing something well, it feels effortless. So getting people into that place where you're training their muscle, their, your, their muscles, of course, but you're really training their nervous system into those states. What were some of the, some of the tools that, re, that you were using to do that? Well, we had one of the coolest speed programs. I'll start with speed coordination stuff because the, you know, the nerves fire the muscles. So you got to start there. So we started off doing more conventional, uh, if you will, speed, speed drills, coordination drills. But we do them in different rhythms and we do them in different coordination patterns and we do them non-linearly. So we do them in semicircles and figure eight. So we're actually getting, helping get the body in the infinite flow of the universe, not doing straight line warm ups, which every NFL, MLB, you turn on the TV and you watch them or go to a game, they're always warming up in straight lines. And it just, I still cringe to this day. And I, I'm in the public sector and not within an organization, right. but unfortunately they're still doing it the wrong way. So that was the one thing right out of the gate where we really differentiate ourselves. Like you would literally see someone play out of their head after doing our warm up compared to not warming up at all or doing a straight line, whatever warm up. So that's interesting. Yeah. So, so it's almost like you're drawing these figure eights. It's almost like an infinity loop that you're having them move through. Was that kind exactly. of what it is with their feet? They're kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Jeff. That's interesting. And yeah, you look at horses. Do you have videos of those? Yeah, we have videos online, but the horses. So my daughter jumps horses. She's an equestrian jumper. She's the number one meter 30 jumper, 16 and under in North America. And when I'm watching these horses, they're so, they're incredible athletes. They're always doing figure eights. They're always, you know, they're, they're leading off of one leg, lean off of the other leg. They're ambidextrous. I mean, it's incredible to see the coordination in these horses. And so, uh, for me now, 25 years later to get into that sport and see how much figure eights they're doing all the time. It's really fun to see. We're just not doing that as athletes as a whole, unless you're in, in one of my programs. Got it. So you're also a surfer. So, uh, when you go surfing, do you have a particular warm up that you do for surfing? Like do you do some of this figure eight work maybe with your eyes closed or, 
or how, tell us a little bit about that. I'm just curious. Well, for any activity that I'll do, I'll typically warm my body up for about 45 minutes. When I was playing a lot of basketball, uh, now it's beach volleyball, same thing. I had to stabilize my body and prepare it. So I just shared one aspect of our warm up with you. But what we do is David Weck, mm -hmm. we had one of the first BOSU balls in there. Steve Cotter is kettlebell guy, one of the first to bring kettlebells to the U.S. Uh, he was in the gym with us 25 years ago as well. So I had these incredible guys in the gym. So, And then Dean Brittenham actually showed David Weck what to do on the BOSU ball. So he'd be like, stand on it and balance. And then so he had Steve Weck or, or Steve, he had Steve Cotter stand on it. And he was a big martial arts guy as well as kettlebell you know, competition guy. He would go down and do 42 one-legged pistols on a BOSU ball, one of the first ever made, which was crazy. Mm -hmm. So we were doing nervous mm -hmm. system training. Yeah. We do BOSU balls, but we're stacking the nervous system. So we juggle, which is a figure eight. You're, you're throwing the ball up and under to the other hand, which creates a figure eight. So we're doing balancing on one leg, juggling, doing math equations. So we're stacking the nervous system as you're going through your warm up, okay. we do the active isolated stretching, which is a two second hold. We're doing right now more, more Gary Lineham fascia work. So we're doing some fascia releases with the body as well, because the fascia is the framework of the body. And so that's a huge, huge part mm -hmm. of it. And I, I believe AIS connects with it a bit as well with the, some of the rotational aspects of it. So we do, uh, we combine a, a bunch of AIS. Explain, explain AIS. Explain AIS for the audience here for a sec. Yeah, so there's a guy named uh, Aaron Mattis. He's a kinesiotherapist out of Sarasota, Florida, and he developed active isolated stretching. And it's a two second hold. Mm -hmm. it, it's your muscles reciprocally uh, inhibit each other. So you contract one side while you relax the other. And that's how your body works under movement. So he developed a stretching system with a two second breath of the muscles to pump blood, oxygen, nutrients into the fascia and in the muscles to help warm it up and create some length and wake up the nervous system. Nice. Um, okay. So yeah. And again, you've got videos of this online. Is that right? Yeah, we have some videos online and I wrote a book on it too. So yeah, you can, you see okay. of it. I'm Which pulling out a, I, I got a, we had a cert course and then I, I pulled it off. And so I'm re revamping the certification course to train doctors and experts in the field. Okay. And what, um, what's your name of your book? Athleticism. Whole body plus whole brain okay. equals performance. Okay. I agree with all that. Um, no, that's my first book. Second book is grounded by nature on EMF topic. Right. EMF. Right. So do you attribute, I'm sure you do some of your daughter's success in her equestrian activities to, you know, these techniques, I'm sure she's been exposed to them from a young age. Is that correct? Yes. And that was one of the big things I was doing when she was little we're doing nerve work with her and coordination stuff and rewiring that the brain because it, it's there's so much neuroplasticity that you can have in it. So if she would just right. reach for one thing with her right hand, I, I I taught her that it was okay to reach with the other hand. So and then start throwing with okay. the right hand or tapping a balloon with one hand, tap it in the air with the other hand. So teaching just mm -hmm. this coordination, getting both sides of the brain really working together from a young age has been uh, crucial for her to be in the flow state. She, she was already a, a ultra gifted athlete. She is uh, one of those phenoms that you know, you'd see in her age. There's one other girl that I've seen in Orange County that's her age that, that is at that same caliber uh, with athletic coordination. Uh, she just has... Mm -hmm we've been, we've developed it in a big way. So she's been really able to excel in her specific sport. Do you think she would have been a gifted athlete without this? Are you kind of intimating here that you could take somebody that's less athletic and actually make them a significantly better athlete? Or what are you hypothesizing here? 
What I've seen with her is she obviously she had great coordination going in, but I feel what we've done has allowed her to achieve the successes at a young age that she's achieved where most kids don't really Mm -hmm. do that. They've never seen two gold medals and, you know, a 15 year old and the meter 30 class and North America youth, you know, association championships for, for equestrian. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's really rare. So yes, you, we can develop, help develop anybody into a better athlete straight out of the gate, no matter what level you are at, you can get better. I guarantee it. If you're top five in the world, we'll take you to four, three, two uh, on up. There's no telling how good you can get. And if you're a rec athlete, if you're high school athlete wanting to go collegiate, yes, this program will help get you there. And it's all literally road mapped in, in the book for you. Okay. And so do you also have the ability for people to reach out and be coached by you or your staff or something like that? Or how does that work? Yes. Yeah. We still see some clients. I don't see as many personally, but we'll see clients and, and we can help them. Mostly I'm treating athletes now with injuries. So I don't spend an hour with someone. I'll spend 20 minutes with them, but it'll be more Mm -hmm. impactful than two hours with somebody else working with them per se. Sure. So uh, it, it's, yep. it's really impactful. So yes, we still see clients and, and, uh, have a, you know, a facility here in Costa Mesa where we train and treat and then have a warehouse to fulfill and ship our products. Okay, cool. And how are your wrists these days? They're still really sensitive. So if I were to go in and play tennis, I would have to have a chiropractic adjustment before I play and then make sure they're, they're set. I damaged so much tissue and ligament tendon damage all the way up and down that still into my fifties, uh, if I start to hammer away at it, I'm not a guy that can play yeah. two days in a row. I have to take several days off before I'd play again. Okay. And have you, um, have you done any regenerative therapy? Such as, you know, stem cell. Stem cells, exosomes, peptides. Uh, I, ha- I haven't like done it on those. I've just been doing energy work and light and fascia and stretching and strengthening. And uh, so that's helping me enough, but I haven't, I haven't gone there yet. Yeah. Well, if you want to go the extra mile, there's a lot that could be done there to help you be able to play back to back days. So. Wow. Okay. Uh, I find that. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, I find that the magic is really in blending the technologies together, we'll call it really, because there's there's truth and there's goodness in, in many different approaches, right? And it's it's kind of how you orchestrate putting those together that you start to get really exponential results. It sounds like you're getting exponential results in many respects, but certainly with some of the injury stuff, um, some of the regenerative technologies can really be game changers. So it's cool. Yeah, I'll look into that for sure. So tell us a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. So thinking about the EMF. So you first ran into the EMF stuff with a, an athlete that was complaining of pain and weakness in his arm that he was wearing a watch on. And then tell us about that rabbit hole. What did you do when you went down there? The first thing was to identify why that was causing so much pain and why did I feel pain early on? And in college, I took an internship at a real estate firm and got stuck at the x-ray machine copying papers for guys for weeks on end. And I'd pull the paper Mm. off the machine and it was hot. It was like really, really hot. And so my fingertips, I'd be like, oh, it's hot, hot, hot. But but that was x-ray. That was ionized radiation 30 years ago. And I'm like, oh, I just, yeah, this young kid going, oh, it's hot. And I would do it again. Oh, it's hot. It's hot. Well, now here we are decades later, I have nerve pain in my fingers. And so every time I touch a, a okay. touch screen, Jeff, my, my fingertips have that same burning sensation. So I've had learning experiences along the way. Just a, a quick adjunct to that. I feel the kids today that are on these screens all the time and can type faster with one finger on an Apple phone, just going from letter to letter than I could do with 10 on a computer are going to have that same right. nerve challenge 
in, in several decades because electricity is a different energy source and field and waveform than how we're made. And so that's what I, I was mm -hmm. on a mission to do is identify what the difference was and then how did it affect us? And then, you know, how, how do we coexist with this? So what did you end up developing? Cause you've developed some products and some solutions and some strategies here. Uh, walk us through a little bit of, about how you got there and what you have. Yeah. So let me start back with, with what I found in, in yeah, we, we rolled out the grounding bags because everyone looks to nature to, to get grounded by nature. So uh, the grounding, the EMF rocks, uh, we, we sent you a care package. So uh, those are the ones that we sell through doctor clinics all around the country. But taking a step back, mm -hmm. Jeff, we I started to identify this difference between them. I'm like, why it does electricity, why is it different than we are? And what I learned is that we're made on scalar waves. There are waves that distribute equally in every direction. That's the framework of every living uh, resonance in our universe. Why do we drop a pebble mm -hmm. in a pond and the waveform of the pond goes a circular direction? Why is that? Why doesn't it go in a straight line to the right or left it, or it, diagonal mm -hmm. or whatever? It's because of scalar waves. There are waveforms that distribute equally in every direction and show it in our body. Our bodies have an energy field. Everyone's like, stay six feet away. Well, that's our resonance. It doesn't go six feet from your right ear <laughs> out. It's a resonance that goes every direction. And same with mm -hmm. the sun, it's unpolarized. So there's a window right there. Why can you still see light underneath my hand? Well, they're unpolarized waveforms. You know, in a big way. So that really is the framework from it. But all electricity, Jeff, they're all one directional waveforms, so they don't work. So that's why you have cell tower panels facing every direction because mm -hmm. they're broadcasting a one right. directional waveform. AC alternating current, mm -hmm. still one directional waves, direct current, a one directional wave. Dirty electricity, one directional, but lots of static in the line. And that's the, what's really damaging for our body. So that's what I identified. We're not made with one directional waves. Electricity is. And so when the two intersect, what you're, what you're saying is that there's a disruption in the natural scalar energy waves that's disrupted by this, you know, arrow that gets shot into the, into the mix. Exactly. So just to break down the speed of the wave. So let's quantify that and understand physics wise, like how we rev, how the universe revs uh, and how the you know, 4G, 5G rev. So we're brain, our brainwave state when we're sleeping, you're familiar with alpha, alpha delta, theta brainwave states, right? Obviously. So yeah, delta, sure. delta theta are the brainwave states when you're in a lucid dream, recovery, REM pattern, rapid eye movement, restorative sleep. Your brainwave state is low and slow. It's one or below one to approximately eight hertz. And I convert that hertz to waves per second. So you're one or below one to eight hertz or waves per second in that alpha or excuse me, in that theta, delta theta brainwave state. When our athletes are in the flow, they're in an alpha state. They're about eight to 12, 13 hertz or waves per second when they can't miss. That's where all the figure eight stuff that we're doing, the sound therapy that we're doing to get them in that state is. And that is the flow state of an athlete. That's the proper brainwave state. The universe, the earth per se, I'll say the earth, when everyone says, let's get grounded by nature and go outside and go barefoot, touch a tree, let's do earthing, grounding, get into a body of water. The pulse, the healing pulse of the earth, Jeff, is 7.83 hertz or waves yeah. per second. They call it the Schumann right. resonance. It varies depending on season. Right. Yeah, but that's approximately what it is. So we rev really one with the universe in a huge way. These cell phones right here, mm -hmm. 
2.45 billion waves per second of a one directional waveform with an antenna coming straight out the top of it. That's 10 zeros mm -hmm. faster than how we sleep rev and optimize. Yeah, no, I get it. I, I get the, uh, the potential for disruption there for sure. This episode of the Gladden Longevity Podcast is brought to you by H2 Molecular Hydrogen in the Gladden Longevity Store. Yeah, Steve, you've heard us talk about this numerous times on the podcast in terms of the benefits of, of H2 um, and hydrogen water. We love it. You know, it's really the best way to balance your entire redox system. So it really protects you from free radical damage. I take it every time I get on a flight to protect me from radiation damage when I'm flying. And I use it to rejuvenate my brain in the afternoon. You know, there's really two kinds of exercise. There's physical exercise and taking H2 before or after that works great, but also there's mental exercise. And I find that the H2 will bring your brain back when you're tired in the afternoon. So mm. I think it's like the perfect thing for longevity and for performance, quite honestly. And I talked to you about this, that I found dropping one or two tablets in a glass of water right before bed. I've seen an overall bump in my deep sleep when I do so. And Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So if you click on the store tab, when you visit gladdenlongevityshop.com and use the promo code podcast 10, you'll get 10% off your order. And this code isn't only good for our H2 product, but it's also good for all the supplements we carry. So podcast 10 at the Gladden Longevity shop.com. Yeah, one of the other things that I, I use it for routinely is when I'm about to go on a mountain bike ride. And I will say this, that with if I go on a long mountain bike ride, I will take one prior, I'll take one during, and I'll take one after. And some of the Ironmen that we've worked with have said that when they're doing an Ironman, they'll take it three or four times throughout the race. And yeah. they're, they're, yeah, their comment is that it's like taking out the old battery and putting in a new one. It really rejuvenates your body's ability to perform uh, when you're doing more extended athletic activity. So think about that too. You know, if you want to go do a longer hike or whatever else, take it with you. So gladdenlongevityshop.com, enter podcast 10 for 10% off your order. H2 molecular hydrogen. It's low hanging fruit on your quest to make 100 the new 30. You know, it's interesting when I think about alpha, I think about being in a meditative state and then, of course, there's beta one, beta two, beta three, and then there's gamma. And I know that gamma can also be associated with flow states and actually higher levels of meditation, like yogis and other people are able to access gamma uh, as opposed to alpha. And I think gamma is also can be associated with flow states, a little bit different level. Do you guys play it all with gamma or is it all focused on alpha or how do you think about that? I don't feel we've got really as much in the gamma. Gamma, what, what ray form? About 40, 30 to 40 hertz? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so uh, milligoss is 50 to 60 waves per second. So that's where that's the speed of the wave on that. We haven't done as much in the gamma state where you, I feel a lot of people are getting into it with us and our technology. It's more low and slower. Then you go into that super conscious realm where you're still heightenedly awake, mm. but in a lower brainwave state. And I don't have the tools to, to test it at that extensive level. Okay. Patrick Porter yep. worked with his products from mind spa to brain tap for you know, 25 years. Yep. And so a lot of the, the stuff that we're doing is more in that alpha brainwave state and, and getting them into the theta to get them into alpha more consistently. Right. That, so there you go. Right here. I use it all the brain time. Tap. Yeah, we use it all the time. Yeah. So brain tap's really interesting because um, there's an SMR program on there also, which kind of wakes up the nervous system. And according to Patrick, I was talking with him about it in the last couple of weeks, that it seems to augment balance and things like that. And then there are alpha programs, of course. Theta programs I really like a lot for kind of like pre-sleep just to really kind of take your mind out of the beta altogether and just kind of take you down. And then you can just kind of drift into Delta from there. And then gamma, I like using gamma on it for, I use it while I'm exercising. I'll wear it when I'm on a machine, like a Vasper or something like that, or I'll nice. actually put it in gamma as I'm driving to mountain bike. And then I'll jump on the mountain bike and I'll go into a flow state 
very quickly, you know, things like that. So, but I'll have to try the alpha with it and see. And then we do a lot of balance training, a lot of balance boards, right? Indo boards, extreme balance boards, BOSU balls, Swiss balls, all, anything we can do to challenge the nervous system. Yeah. A lot of eyes I, open, eyes closed. Um, right? Yeah, because when your eyes are closed, it's a factor of four harder and, and more interesting, quite honestly. So doing all that. But yeah, I'll have to try it with the alpha also. So yeah. Cool stuff. Yeah. And then, yeah, so definitely the eyes closed and then turning your head to the right, left, looking up, down, you're changing the proprioception. So you're okay. just yeah, having heightened yep. awareness and, and connections with the nerves for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. It sounds like you're doing math problems while you're doing that and then juggling as well. Right. So yeah, we do eye charts, math challenges. We, we have a list. I have eye exercises where we'll do with it as well to strengthen the muscles in the mm -hmm. eye. You're not going to get big bug eyes, but they'll refine your focus, your fine motor skills. So we'll do cross-eyed method and a few right. other things. Okay. We've been using uh, something called Synaptec. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's basically a tool to measure neuromuscular reaction times. And then we wear these glasses that actually will, has a shutter that comes down and blocks your vision and then, it opens up and you can, you uh, can yeah, change I've heard the of that. at which it's closing. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Then you, you know, now you're catching a tennis ball. Now you're playing ping pong. Now you're doing things right. And so you get less visual input. So your brain is forced to figure stuff out with less information. All super fun. That's cool. So. Yeah. There's so many fun tools. What I've been doing now more is, uh, is more quantum neurology esque. Per se, I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's a nerve rehabilitation system. So we use light therapy to fire the myotomes, to fire the muscles quicker. So if you're having a okay, challenge, so what's that? I was just going to ask your question. So there's red light uh, that can be used on the brain to rehabilitate the brain. You're talking about and red light can be used on joints and muscles and other things too. So are you using it on the centrally or are you using it peripherally? I use I it... Uh, Centrally, uh, and basically, well, okay. both actually. But we do when I do the nerve work, we'll hit lights mostly throughout the body. Nerve junctions are great spots to hit them, and we'll do some applied kinesiology. And if they can't see to the right, eye tracking, eyes only, looking to the right, back and forth, we can fire that up. If their if their bicep C six isn't isn't fully firing, I mean it's activated, it's innervated. Mm -hmm. It's there. They can flex. They can flex their muscle. But if I went to push pull on it, it's it, they can't hold strong. We would fire that nerve up. And what I found is it quantifiably makes them about twenty percent stronger. And we've tested that on an ARX machine, which is an unbelievable. So okay. if yeah, we keep both. dialing athletes up twenty percent on their nerves, and we can start to fire mm -hmm. the sensory nerves, motor nerves more optimally and they keep upregulating their system, they're going to keep getting stronger and stronger. And that's a lot of what we're doing now. Right. That's super cool. Yeah, we have ARX in our, in our gym. We love ARX. Uh, so love things like that. But I, yeah, to me, see, it's back to this kind of initial conversation slash comment about, it's really all about the nervous system. Yeah. And, if you get the nervous system firing, right, then the muscles come along for the ride. The strength comes along. But it's really the nervous system that creates everything. In fact, you know, when people start lifting weights, the first thing they're actually doing is not strengthening the muscle. They're strengthening the nervous system. That's been shown. So in your world, what I love about what you're doing is that you're focused on the nervous system and balancing the nervous system as well as kind of uh, enhancing its ability to perform both speed, strength, you know, duration contraction probably all the above so that's very cool yeah it's fun it's been it's been a fun yes. journey and yeah i i appreciate all the i mean i've learned from so many incredible that kairos and doctors out there so it's been it's been fun to kind of pull some of their stuff but then bring it back into the trenches working with athletes yeah awesome so let's talk a little bit more about emf so we understand that emf is an arrow that's being shot into uh, the scalar wave milieu, if you will, environment. And then, and so what's the strategy? Grounding, of course, but what, what are your strategies that you use apart from probably distancing yourself from, from devices 
So, yeah, definitely. Well, you got to understand where the stressors are coming from. So I recommend everyone, Jeff, get some meter. So you need a milligauss meter, 50 to 60 waves per second will measure. So they make meters to measure the cer certain speeds of those waveforms. A dirty electricity meter, my favorite is a plug-in one from Dave Stetzer, stetzerelectric.com. It's about 150 bucks. Great meter, plug it into your wall. It'll give you the GS units, the Graham Stetzer units, he calls them, amps to volts. And any static in the line, it will show. And those are fantastic because you could take a healthy home. It should be 50 or to below when it's grounded properly and, and the wires going in and out of certain areas are grounded and meet. Uh, most homes with solar or new LED lights with uh, transformers in the lights, they'll have upwards of you know, five, six, 700 uh, GS units on up into the 1600 range. So solar, they haven't figured out how to ground it yet. So you'll have really unhealthy home when you're in a solar home. In the last decade that I've metered homes all throughout Southern California, that's what I found. Then you go into the dirty, or excuse me, the wireless signals and get an acoustometer. And they measure those waveforms from 50 million to billions of waves per second. Uh, they don't make a meter, at least I haven't found one. I heard they're starting to make one, but I haven't bought it or found it or haven't seen it commercially that measures the strength of a cell phone. So I can buy a $500 acoustometer, one directional meter, point at my cell phone and it'll meter out just for me turning my cell phone on. It can't even showcase mm. the level of my own cell phone. So how in the world are we able to tell what the level of the router is or your smart meter? Cause those meter out too. your, your earbuds meter out all the, the app, the smart watches mm -hmm. meter out. So those are super challenging things. But the first going back, I kind of get sidetracked a little bit though. The first thing is, is identify what the stressors are. Once you have those stressors, Jeff, then you develop proximity protocols to it. So get your router out from underneath your desk, stop driving an electric car and sitting on a massive battery because that's 18% lower testosterone, by the way. Stop having your phone next to you. Uh, stop wearing wireless earbuds and having, that's an airway canal directly to your brain. There's no skull there when you put that up there. That's an airway canal directly to your brain. So we don't have any defense mechanisms right there. So really understanding all this stuff. Stop putting laptops on your lap. I mean, what a brilliant marketing campaign. Let's put a battery in a router and put it over everyone's reproductive organs, call it a laptop and think that's going to right. serve everyone well. So start to identify that, mm -hmm. put one of our Faraday bags between your body and the computer if you have to put it on and then throw a grounding bag next to you. Uh, so when you're, and then get outside, go get grounded by nature, touch a tree, get no body water, have a picnic. Uh, go barefoot, and then when you're inside, use our grounding bags. Got it. And what about um, like grounding sheets for beds and things like that? Don't use them anymore. Anything you're plugged into the wall, you're plugged into the grid. I mean, it's a futile effort. It's like eating GMO food. I don't eat GMO food. Do you? No. So why would we create a resonance that's artificial and use that when you can use Earth's resonance? Our crystals are hand mined. Mm -hmm. So these are hand mined crystals. That's what's inside of here. There's not a man made device or frequency. This is the resonance of the Earth that you're bringing to your home. So any your bed's right. touching the wall, Jeff, it's charged to level the outlet. I'll get to that in a sec. Yeah. Uh, so anytime you're having that, you're, you're creating a, a, a situation where you're, you're always wired. We want to have wooden frames, you know, the wood is still a conductor, but it's not as like, vibrationally crazy as metal is. So, you know, start to have some awareness of turning your electricity off in your home. All our bedrooms, the electricity goes off on a timer at night. 
And then, and then we have our outlet timer for a router, but ideally you should hardwire your home. It's faster, it's safer, it's more reliable. And I just heard a really cool thing. There's one of the telecom companies that are, they're pushing hardwiring now because it's so fast and clean and uninterrupted. So they're going back to the fiber optic, which will be a lifesaver for everybody. Yeah, little pyramid. Shanghai, uh, yeah. Yeah, so Shanghai, yeah, exactly. So does this actually work or what's the story here? Yeah, they work. They kick off a resonance. It's fantastic for it. The challenge is, Jeff, is they get overrun really quickly. It's just not enough mm. mass to sustain creating a coherence for you for any extended period of time. With that thing, you'd have to put it on your ground every day for sure or more. With our grounding bags, they're one pound bag of crystals, so there are enough density of crystals in there to create a coherence for a lot longer. So you don't only have to, we don't even have to reground them, but people have had really good benefits ever after every two to three months going out and putting them back on the ground and recharging them, cleaning them out. Uh, just okay. literally placing this bag on the ground outside and uh, I can feel energy move. You'll feel it clear right away. Interesting. And tell me about what kind of crystals are in there? They're called so coiloid. Like or what's in there? No, they're actually not quartz or amethyst or black tourmaline or shungite. Those are some of the known crystals to help with EMF protection. These are coiloid crystals. So they've been compressed from an underground water source. So they have both moisture with the magnetic in them. So literally they're like a soft soapy rock per se, they'll dry out you know, and, and you know, two to four years, you gotta buy a new bag. And uh, when they lose their pink color and lose their, when they lose their form, they lose their function for EMF protection. So they'll last for years, the and... they'll last for years, but you need to get new ones. I'm sorry, what was that? What if you throw the bag in the ocean? It'll turn to clay. It'll turn to clay. You can't get it okay. wet. You can't get it into heat. So it has its own moisture content. That doesn't mean it's wet, like like uh, you're wet when you're taking a shower okay. and you're in the ocean. But the moisture with that magnetic properties, you'll see condensation sometimes on the clear plastic part of the bag from the crystals having so much moisture in it. Okay. And then tell me about the Faraday bag. So, yeah, when we first made those. Uh, we made them so you could put them in and go go dark, and, and immediately right when we made them, they just the phone wouldn't ring in them, and then shortly thereafter, the phone started ringing them, and I'm going, "What the heck? The phone's now ringing." They kept ratcheting up the signals. This is a seven millimeter static aluminum static bag, so and it's well made. It's the most quality fourteen dollar you know ninety nine cent bag on the market. And what I found in the last you know, several years is that they keep ratcheting up the signal strength. So now the phones not only ring inside of there, so your location can be found, but, but what happens is, is the cool thing about them and why people love them is it lowers the signal strength to safe levels from what bioinitiative.org would consider safe and what muscle okay. testing would consider safe. So it, people, if they don't have the budget to buy a grounding bag, they'll throw their phone in a Faraday bag at night. They'll still have it on and they'll be able to sleep because the brainwave states, it's, it drops it down uh, to such a low and slow state that it doesn't affect the body and your brain doesn't try to figure out what's pinging it at night when you're sleeping. And then also yeah. so it helps with... with uh, the life of your battery, the, the data harvesting, they, they keep data harvesting. So they're, they're aggregating information, uh, at record speeds. No, I'm just saying for the audience, the Faraday bag is a way to kind of put your phone in a bag, which isolates it from you, uh, electronically is kind of a simple way to think about it. It's kind of like making the phone more relatively invisible. So yeah, it's another way as opposed to trying to take EMFs out of the air or ground, you actually just put the, uh, the offending device in isolation, put it in timeout, so to speak. So that would be uh, 
kind of the Faraday approach. Yeah. And they have really expensive ones that are a couple hundred dollars that'll completely get you off the grid. Ours aren't. They're, they're really inexpensive, but they slow down the data harvesting. They save the life of your battery and they lower the signal strength. Okay, cool. Well, it sounds like you're doing some good work there. And it sounds like these two worlds are kind of intersecting for you because if you're looking at optimizing athletic performance, managing EMFs is, of course, part of that. So do you have your athletes? Are they wearing any kind of tracking device? Are they wearing an aura ring or a whoop or a Garmin watch or any of that? Or you just try to steer people away from that? I'm steering people away from it. I, I, that is my big mission right now is in testing athletes. I know that's a part of professional sports and organizations to track and stuff. But let me remind everyone, you do a base point, <laughs> baseline test midpoint and an end point. It's not an everyday thing. So they're not going to be going Mach mm -hmm. 10 every day. So why don't we start to go back to using technology properly and not letting it use us and starting to allow the athletes to know how they feel and get out of the meta universe for having something tell them how they feel. That's not what's going to be enhancing. Mm -hmm. That's not what's going to give, give you the most bang for your buck that's not what's going to get the most out of every athlete. So we can use technology. It's a great tool in a lot of different ways. Uh, is it a stressor on the body when you're using it? Yes. Can we kind of build our life force up so it doesn't affect us? Yes. Uh, so you can, you can Shaolin monks, these guys that breathe and have crazy strong energy, they're not really affected by it at all per se, but most people don't sit around and breathe all day and just meditate all day. So we, we have to be more diligent and have some better boundaries with this stuff. And we've never seen the electrification of our entire universe at this level ever, like ever seen it. So oh, sure. we're, we're yeah. running in a, in a time that is unprecedented. And now not only are we rolling out satellites everywhere uh, with, with 5G beaming on them, phased array coming down, this whole Internet of Things as, is at a level we've never seen it. And in the book, The Invisible Rainbow, have yeah. you read that one, Jeff? No. Oh, yeah. So put that on your list. The Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg. He categorizes the history of electricity and life, and he directly correlates to every major pandemic to shifts in our electromagnetic blanket of an atmosphere, whether it was cosmic before 1889, and we, that's when we introduced electricity in the homes, or after 1889 was the electricity you know, started coming in, the flu was here to stay, and then 1918, we had World War II, uh, and then the Spanish flu, or Hong Kong flu. Uh, so 1918 was Spanish flu. We rolled out radio waves for the first time, Hong Kong flu, satellites, World War II radar, the last several years, 5G. So he's correlated the stuff uh, directly to rollouts of big new electrification in our atmosphere. And then before that were solar flares or cosmic shifts that were tied to timings of when a lot of people get sick. And so to me, Bruce Lipton will say your health lies in your chi and your energy field. Well, if you're getting a disruption from it, whether it's cosmic or man-made, that's going to affect our life force and then our, our disrupt our sleep, disrupt our REM patterns, whether it's waves or particles are disrupting it, who knows, but our bodies will adapt at the level we're capable. So that's a lot of what we've seen. So we got to really understand that we're treading some crazy waters right now with all this wearable tech, having it closer and we're already, it's already scary enough with our government saying, hey, non ion is okay when Dr. Martin Paul out of Washington State said it's not. It affects our mitochondria right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's interesting. It's also interesting your comment about electric cars and sitting on the battery and lower testosterone levels. That's interesting. So, yeah. That I can write a dissertation on that one. That one's a hot topic for me. I just, uh, really want people to know electricity is not uh, something that you really want to be sitting on 
like all the time. <laughs> it's just not. You can use it for therapy yeah. or pain or just. So when, when you talk about solar, it's interesting, Art, because you can have solar energy coming to you from an array in your backyard that's, you know, 100 yards away from you, or you can have it sitting on your roof. Is there a difference in those kinds of installations or what are your thoughts on that? Well, the further away, the better. And it's going to be also the battery of, of the, where it's keeping it is going to, you want it off the house. Yeah. That's where the vibration is going to come a lot so, from those Tesla batteries are hot. I mean, they're kicking off a, a lot of vibration and I've seen fires in my own neighborhood. We had a house almost burned down from a Tesla solar battery. Interesting. Well, fascinating, fascinating conversation. I think the audience probably learned a few things here. I found it really interesting. So anyway, I appreciate you being on the show, Justin. And if you'll hang on uh, for a few minutes, we'll end this portion of the podcast and go to the uh, Age Hackers Plus portion here and ask you a couple extra questions. So, Got it. Thanks, Jeff.